always look on the bright side of life. Always look on the light side of life. In this video, we're looking in a little bit more detail at the Loftus and Palmer study, and the title of the study is on our screen Reconstruction of Automobile Destruction, an example of the interaction between language and memory. Okay, and this was done in 1974. So what was the aim of the study? Well, um, Loftus and Palmer wanted to investigate whether the phrasing of a question can influence the judgment of a speed. Okay? Um, and within that, they were looking at leading questions and memory. Okay? And actually looking at whether leading, uh, leading questions can change somebody's memory of an event. So what kind of prompted them to do this study? Well, um, Elizabeth Loftus had been doing a lot of research into memory anyway. Um, and it followed on from some other studies that had been done. So um, Marshall in 1969 found that people had difficulty estimating the speed of cars, even if they knew they would be asked about it. Um, people tend to be better when the cars are going slightly faster, kind of around 40 miles per hour, they tend to be a bit more accurate. But um, certainly around slower speeds, they tend to massively overestimate how fast the cars are going. Um, Daniel in 1972 had already found that memory is affected by the verbal labels that you attach to it. Um, so Lofton and Palmer were kind of putting those two factors together um, in their experiment. So what method did they follow? Um, it was a laboratory experiment. So instantly when you're thinking about evaluation points, you should be thinking, okay, high levels of control, but ecological validity is likely to be low. It was an independent measures design, so participants only took part in one aspect of the independent variable. Um, and who were those participants? Well, there were actually two parts to Loftus and Palmer's experiment. In the first experiment, um, the participants were 45 students. Okay, so again, when you think about the evaluation, you can probably think of a few points related to that. Um, they were put into groups of various sizes to actually take part in the experiment. They did it at various different times. Okay, what actually happened? What was the procedure? So, each participant watched seven films of traffic accidents. Okay, all participants, all 45 participants watched the exact same seven films, although the order the films were shown in did vary just to get rid of any order effects. Um, those films vary between five and 30 seconds, so they were very short in duration. Okay, so they weren't being asked to remember a large um, section of film. At the end of each film, participants were given a questionnaire okay and um, within that questionnaire they had to do two things so the first thing they had to do after each film was given an account just generally describe what they had just witnessed what they had just observed um, and the second thing they had to do was answer a series of questions now Loftus and Palmer weren't really interested in the description they gave of the accident and they weren't interested in their answer to the majority of the questions but there was one critical question that was hidden or embedded within the other questions um, and that was the only thing that was the dependent variable that's what they were interested in and that critical question was about how fast were the cars going when they hit each other now the independent variable the thing that Loftus and Palmer changed was the verb okay that was used in place of hit so for some of the participants the word hit was used okay that was changed for smashed collided bumped and contacted for each of the different groups, okay? So they were interested whether by changing that critical word, okay, that critical verb, did it affect participants' estimates of how fast on average the cars were going across all seven clips, okay? So in terms of the independent variable, there were five obviously different variables and each group had nine participants in it. But it wasn't that all the participants that were watching the film at the same time had the same critical question. Okay, there would have been a mixture of uh, participants having different critical questions within each viewing of the uh, experiment. Okay, so what were the results? Did it actually have an effect? Yes, it did. Okay, um, these are the mean speed estimates depending on the verb. So you can see smashed had the highest speed estimate at 40.8 miles per hour on average across all seven videos, whereas contacted only 31.8 miles per hour. So there is quite a significant difference overall. Okay, um, and you know, obviously the bigger difference depends on, on the verb actually used. 
Okay, so what did Loftus and Palmer conclude at the end of their first experiment? So firstly, the wording of a question can significantly affect an eyewitness's answer to it. This obviously has important implications for things like the police, um, prosecution service, lawyers, barristers, um, people who are going to be relying on and using eyewitnesses. Um, now, what they said is there's two possible reasons why the wording affects um, their answer. The first possible explanation is response bias. Okay, so basically they watch, they watch the video, they're not too sure. Maybe it was 20 miles an hour, maybe it was 30 miles an hour. So they're uncertain. So what they do is they use the verb to bias their response. If the verb that's there said smashed, they're going, okay, was it 20, was it 30? Well, it says smashed there. In order for something to smash, it was probably going quite fast. So let's err on the side of 30, okay? Um, so... Again, there, if you had the verb contacted, you might go, well, it only says contacted. So my guess is it must have been closer to 20 miles per hour. So you're, you're giving the answer that you think the researchers want, okay, based on the clue they're giving you in the verb. So it's not actually alterate, oh, sorry, alterating, it's not actually altering your memory of the event. It's purely biasing the response you're going to give, okay? Um, so that's related to demand characteristics. You're giving the answer that you think the researcher wants you to give. The other possible reason why the verb affected the speed estimate is because that differing question, that different verb, has actually changed your memory of the accident. Okay, um, So the verb makes the witness see a more or less severe accident in their mind. Okay, So it's actually distorting the memory. Okay, um, So Loftus and Palmer proposed or thought that if it was changing the memory okay if the correct explanation is number two then participants are more likely to remember other details that didn't occur but fitted with the memory of the accident having occurred at a higher speed and because of that proposal they went on to do experiment two so again this was another laboratory experiment again it's an independent measures design okay but who were the participants this time again they're students so a similar group of uh, participants but this time uh, a larger sample there's 150 participants here okay each participant sees a one minute film okay that contains a four second clip of a multi-vehicle accident so it's just one one crash that they're watching this time as opposed to seven so after they've seen the crash video, they're given a questionnaire a week later. Okay. Firstly, they had to describe the accidents in their own words. Then again, just like the first one, they had to answer some questions. And just like before, there is a critical question in there. Okay. Um, 50 of the participants had the question about how fast were the cars going when they hit each other. Okay. 50 of the participants had the same question, but hit was substituted for smashed. And then 50 of the participants were not asked about speed at all. Okay. So, first of all, what were the results of the speed estimates? When the verb was smashed, they gave the speed as 10.46 miles per hour. When the verb was hit, it was 8 miles per hour. So again, you can see there is a significant difference in the average speed estimate. Okay, uh, again, one week later, the participants then returned. Um, here, they answered a series of 10 questions, and the order of the questions varied. It was They were randomly ordered to get rid of any order effects, um, depending on the participant, and there was one question they were actually interested in, and that was, did you see any broken glass? Okay. Um, and just to note, there was no broken glass in the original film. So the the answer, the correct answer to that question would be no. But what Loftus and Palmer were interested in was, did the verb that was used about the speed estimate alter how likely they were to think they had seen broken glass? Now, what did they find? Um, the majority of people still said no, but when the verb smashed was used, 16 participants reported having seen broken glass. Um, compared to seven in the hit group and six in the control group. So you can see there's not much difference between the control group and the hit group, but more than double the number said that they had seen broken glass when the verb smashed was used. So what did they conclude? Um, first of all, the form of the question can significantly affect an eyewitness's memory. Okay. Um, what Loftus and Palmer proposed was that memory 
actually consists of two pieces of information. So what is gained at the moment of the event, what you actually witness, what you see, but also any information you gain after the event, about the event, becomes integrated into the original memory of the event. And it's very difficult for the individual to pick apart which was the actual original bit and which one you've integrated in from information you've received after the event. Okay, so they become one memory. Um, and so using that verb smashed, okay, even though it's information that's gained after the event, you integrate it into your original memory of the event, it distorts it, and then you can't kind of pick apart the two. Um, this experiment seems to offer support for the second conclusion from experiment one, the idea that it's not a response bias, but it is actually distorting and changing the memory of the event. Okay, so broken glass seems to fit with our understanding, our general understanding of what we're likely to see when there is a car accident. Remember, that's the schema. So you hold in your mind a kind of general idea of what a car accident, car crash is like. So that's your schema. Broken glass fits with that. And so you're relatively likely to agree that you have seen some because you have an expectation that there would have been glass present. So make sure you filled in your study summary sheets of Loftus and Palmer and bring those along with you to next lesson. Always look on the bright side of life. Always look on the light.